This is Mike Roth. Welcome to the Open Forum in the Villages podcast. In this show, we're going to talk to leaders in the community, leaders of clubs, and interesting folks who live here in the villages to give perspective of what's happening here in the villages and information that I think all villagers should have. We hope to add a new episode every Friday morning at 9 o'clock. This is Mike Roth. I want to thank you, John, for being a guest on today's show. Uh, I have John Temple with me, who is running for the Florida House of Representatives. Is that right? That's correct, sir. John, first of all, you can call me Mike. <laughs> <laughs> and why don't you tell our, our listeners a little bit about you? Well, I'm a longtime resident. I've lived in Sumter County for over 40 years. I'm a former graduate, and I currently work in the school district uh, where I grew up. I'm married, been married for 22 years to my beautiful wife, Jessica. I have two daughters, uh, one that just recently graduated and another one going into high school. I'm a member at Heritage Community Church. Uh, my faith is very important to me and a member of our community Rotary, Wildwood Rotary Club. The Wildwood Rotary Club. Yes, sir. Interesting. I, I almost joined that one. Yeah, it's a, it's one of the lo- longest standing Rotary Clubs in the state and uh, rich in history. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was a Rotarian for 25 years in Cincinnati. John, what part of the uh, area do you actually live in? I live in Wildwood. Wildwood? Interesting city, uh, Wildwood, in in the sense that it's gone from a lot of native Floridians to two-thirds villagers and one-third natives. Absolutely. There are pros and cons with that, but I see a lot more pros. As a principal at the local elementary school, we had lots of volunteers come in and help and support our students. And so we loved having uh, our partners with the villages. Good, good. Why don't you tell our listeners why you decided to run for statewide office? I have a passion for serving, and I think our elected officials need to have that same passion. And, you know, working within the school system, working within Rotary, working within my church, I want to make sure that, make sure our leadership in Tallahassee understands who they're serving and living in the community and serving in the community have a good background with that. That's important. Before we get any deeper, I forgot to t- tell you a little joke. We always do a joke. Oh, absolutely. For the uh, Improvisational Theater Club, which meets on Mondays at uh 6.30 p.m. at Rohan, or the uh, Boomer Humor Club, which is the second and fourth Fridays at uh, Bacall. What did the, as a school person, what did the elf learn in school? What did the elf learn in school? Yes. I don't know. Tell me. He learned the alphabet. <laughs> <laughs> I told you they were going to be bad jokes. Yes, sir. <laughs> uh, what do you think the major issues are that You can differentiate yourself versus any other candidate. Well, when I'm out in the community and out door knocking and talking to people, there are three things that continually come up, one of which is our infrastructure. We're growing by a thousand people a day into Florida. And so we're used to a certain style of living and we need to make sure that our roads are keeping up with that uh, that lifestyle. Also in our rural areas, um, part of the infrastructure is making sure we get Internet out into those uh, farther reaching areas. And so many of our uh, county members still don't have good quality internet. And we know how important that is. And so making sure that we we get that out there. So infrastructure, amazingly enough, you know, people are concerned about immigration and having open borders. While we don't have a border to protect ourselves, we do see the effects of that by the drugs that are coming into our community and the human trafficking as well. And so that's the second one. And the third is inflation which we all feel when we go to the gas pumps or go to the grocery store. You know, it used to be to go to the grocery store, you spend $100 and you would come out with a buggy full of groceries. Now you come out with three or four bags. And so we're all feeling the pains. And so as an elected official, you know, I'd want to get to Tallahassee and find ways to save money and get back uh, that money to community members, to our constituents. Mm-hmm. Sometimes that takes structural change. How do you feel about making structural changes? In regards to? Well, You mentioned infrastructure. Mm -hmm. The traditional approach to infrastructure is, well, let's hang some cables on poles or bury some fiber optic cables to get Internet service to people in the more rural areas. And by the way, I've experienced that in Cincinnati. Okay. In the traditional infrastructure approach, that was the only way to do it. Mm -hmm. 
Today, we have SpaceX, Elon Musk, putting up 50 satellites a day. Why not provide internet service to the rural sections of the community by a satellite instead of spending hard dollars for capital construction projects, which might take years when you could do it virtually in hours? Absolutely. I think that's a great idea. Um, I was talking to some in, in the rural area in Hernando County, and there's a gentleman that has a cell tower already in his uh, backyard that's ready to go that he leases out to these uh, companies, and they're just waiting to flip the switch. And so we need to make sure that we're doing things like what you're talking about, finding unique ways to get uh, the internet services out there as quickly as possible. Because like you said, many of those projects take years to come to fruition. And if we can find a quicker, more efficient way, a less expensive way, that's what we need to be doing. I think we, we need to be pushing the companies on this G, 5G service, which they've sold to us as being so much faster than 4G. And it's, it's faster, but it's not so much faster. And in fact, it doesn't even cover all of the villages. No. Where we are right now is a 4G area. If you go up to Lady Lake on Rolling Acres Road, they have something called 5G there, but it's not really 5G speed. It comes up on your phone as 5G. Right. I, but I think on some of these dead rural areas where you're talking about a single group of subscribers, a family, that's uh, four miles off the main routes and six miles from the nearest cell tower, I think that having one of Elon Musk's satellite internet services would be radically less expensive than trying to pull fiber optic cable out of long rural road. Well, I think as a legislator, finding ways to save money. So if it was a less expensive way to do it, a more efficient way to do it, then that's what we need to do, whether it's an alternative way. Um, really, the people only care about the results. And so we want to make sure we get the results to the community. And so absolutely would be something we should explore. Mm -hmm. What about some of the things that we could do in the state that are, could actually reduce costs? Provide more common sense approach to our lawsuits. Our court system is uh, jammed packed with full of frivolous lawsuits, fraud type lawsuits. And so uh, my conversations with them is to find ways to use common sense when it comes to those types of issues. As far as setting limitations on advertisements, you can't drive down the road without seeing multiple lawyer advertisements that, you know, we can get you a million dollars with your, uh, your claim. And so it just perpetuates the, the mindset of free money out there. And it's a lottery. Absolutely. A, 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 a slip and fall lottery. Well, it kind of goes along the lines, too, with uh, what the legislator this past uh, session, special session, tried to do is to deal with the homeowner's insurance issues that are going on. I personally had an experience with a, a roofer that came. We, we called several people to come and look and said, hey, you got a roofing claim. You know, you need a new roof. And there was damage done from a storm and I said, well, call my insurance if that's the case. And so he did. And thankfully, I know my insurance company uh, agent very well. And he called me and said, hey, John, just so you know, there's lots of fraud things going around. We're going to send somebody out to take a look and, and we'll have a conversation and, and let you know where it stands. So he called me back after they sent a person out and said, you know, you got a 20 year old roof. Yeah, there's a little bit up there, but there's nothing substantial. I said, it's just Florida, 20 years. It's about time for a new roof. I said, okay, I didn't go with that uh, roofing company because I didn't feel comfortable. I didn't feel like it was just, and there's a lot of that going on around. And so we need to make sure that common sense approach kind of mentioned earlier, making sure that we look at these things and approach them with reasonable expectations. And just like anything else, if there's a warranty that goes along with a warranty that goes along with the shingles, then it should be upheld. Trouble is that I would imagine one of the issues would be tracking down the roofers or tracking down the, the shingle company um, and making sure that they hold up their end of the bargain. Mm -hmm. One of the things you mentioned, the cancellation and in the past legislation, they tried to put something in place to prevent insurance companies for the sole purpose of uh, canceling people's insurance based off the years of their, their shingles, having a, a third party come in and look at the, the roof to make sure that, no, the shingles are fine, they have five years left or 10 years left uh, to make sure that they would not be able to cancel them. So well, see, that's only half of the situation, right. John. But it's a step. It's a and, step, but yeah. You know, if they come in and say, oh, your roof is 11 years old, sir, so we're going to raise your premium 100%, but we're not going to cancel you. 
Then, the, the, then they're within the letter of the law, the way I understand it. Well, hopefully if that's the case, if that's how the insurance are interpreting that, then with additional legislation, we can take that, that loophole out of the way. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You're in a competitive race. Can you contrast your positions to positions of your opponent so that our listeners can understand how to make a choice on the ballot other than just by the name? Yes, sir. Um, my beliefs are, you know, I'm founded within the community, uh, understand the needs of the community and the differences between he and I um, in our primary is that he's not from here. He's from South Florida and from California, so he doesn't understand the community of Sumter County. He doesn't understand the villages in Hernando County and the needs that are there. I do. Um, I have past experience working as the chairman of the Republican Party uh, for Sumter County for the past four years. I recently stepped down to run for this race. I've worked uh, side by side with many of the community members to give back to the community, and I don't know that I can say the same for, for my opponent. As far as when it comes to the issues, Everybody can stand up and say they're for this or for that. What you need to look at is the past experience, in my opinion, and look at the, the steadfast and, and how much the individual has given to the community. And, and what happens if I lose this race? I'm still going to be in my community. I'm still going to be working. I'm still going to make it better. And some of our candidates that are on the ballot this year, if they don't win, they're going to go back to wherever they came from, and they're not going to stay active and involved in the community like I would. Mm -hmm. John, in closing up this uh, this episode, do you have any other final comments for our listeners who are going to be voters? Absolutely. Um, well, Mike, first, thank you for the time today and, and allowing me to, to be here and speak to everyone. One of the things that I want to make sure people understand that I believe you need a, elected officials that have character, integrity, long lasting within the community. And, and that's what I bring to the table. I have a wealth of knowledge, a wealth of resources of people around me uh, that understand particular issues. I've worked as the chairman of the party and worked with our legislative officials in Tallahassee on issues. As an educator, I want to go up and make a difference as well, because I believe just like our governor pushes workforce education, I want to continue to push the workforce education. Um, I don't believe every student needs to be going to college. And so as an educator, I'd like to see more of, of that kind of instruction. Vocational education is absolutely mandatory. Yes, sir. That, that's the way because half of our students uh, go to college. The other half go into the workforce, and sometimes they don't have the skill trades that they need. Yeah. The half that go on to college, half of those don't make it. And so we're talking about 75% of the students that are graduating from our schools are leaving with little to, to no skills or trades to go out and work. And our businesses around us are looking for people to come and work. You've, I'm sure you've been to many of the, the businesses around, and they all have helped one and signs up. Right, right. And it's more skilled jobs that pay more than the minimum wage, and these people can be worth it. Uh, I run the uh, Old German Car Show on October 15th at Harbor Hills, and our charity of choice for the last two years has been Dollars for Scholars. And we give them a rather substantial uh, donation based on the revenue we generate at the show to pay for post-secondary education in trade schools, uh, two-year colleges, as well as four-year colleges. A few uh, endorsements that I'm really proud of as well as we close up. You know, I've got the support from Sheriff Bill Farmer, the Wildwood Police Chief, Randy Palmer, also the Florida Fraternal Order of Police. I think our, our law enforcement is critical that we continue to support them. Um, Realtors Association, Florida Chamber, all five mayors within our community. And so there's lots of support that's going on around us uh, for my, my candidacy. And I'm looking for your support today. So August 23rd, if you would come out and support me when you cast your ballot to vote for John Temple for Florida House District 52. So, John, if they wanted to get more information about you, you must have a website that they could go to. Absolutely. Electjohntemple.com. Electjohntemple.com. That is correct. And you can also email me if you have any additional questions, if you're wondering how I stand on certain issues, at johntempleforflorida at gmail.com. And that four is F-O-R, johntempleforflorida at gmail.com. Now, John... For your entire life, have you been a Republican? Yes, sir. I sure have. Good. Not everyone on the on the ballot on the Republican side can say that. And I'm proud to hear that you are a lifelong Republican. 
Absolutely. NRA member and uh, endorsed by them as well. We have an unbelievable number of clubs and activities here in the villages at over 3,300 clubs. And I think the developer in the recreation department has done a great job in giving people something to live for other than golf. Yes, sir. Or pickleball. <laughs> Both great things. I'm a Both golfer, but, but yes, more than, you know, it gives you something to look forward to and be involved in, uh, something for everybody. So let's review just for a second how people can go out, go about voting for you. It's after the date that you can ask for a mail-in ballot. So how are the, the ways that people who are registered to vote can, can vote? Early, early voting. Early voting. Isn't that on August no, 8th or August 12th? 13th. Well, I'm way off. Yeah. We have early voting. August 13th starts for 10 days. And then... Um, Is that every day of the week? Monday every day of the week. Su- Monday through Sunday? Yes. And you can vote at any of the precincts during early voting. The day of August 23rd, you must vote at your precinct site. So you can vote at any precinct site during early voting, but the day of August 23rd, you must vote at your precinct site. Also, look at your card because those precincts changed with the uh, uh, this past year. So make sure you know which site you're going to. Mine changed. Okay. And on the ballot, you, you appear with three other candidates, uh, but one of them died. Yes, sir. Unfortunately, uh, Mr. Curtis passed away. Um, we were at an event together, uh, all speaking, had a chance to talk to him. Seemed fine, but unfortunately, yes, sir, he, he passed away that, that Sunday. So anyone who was thinking of voting for Curtis, don't do that because then your vote won't count. Vote, vote for John Temple and it will count. Absolutely. It'll count and I'll make you proud of it. Good. John, thanks for being on the show. Yes, sir. Thank you. Remember, our next episode will air live next Friday at 9 a.m. Or should I say pre-recorded? But That's when it will be released on our regular subscriptions. Bonus subscribers can get early access to episodes. Should you want to become a sponsor of the show, contact me at MikeRoth at RothVoice.com. If you know someone that you think should be on the show, send me an email at Mike at RothVoice.com. I want to thank everyone for listening to the show. The content of the show is copyright by Roth Voice 2022, all rights reserved. Bye.